Okay. We have one hour before our lunch break, so uh, we'll make this short. We're still talking about preparation. So um, Daniel uh, presented earlier the family prep preparation, and now it's the uh, prayer preparation. You're doing a spiritual endeavor, spiritual work, so prayer is a big, big part. Um, so I was reflecting our church plan about 19, 18 years ago. This is one thing that the Lord somehow stretched me, really, the prayer life. Uh, so I knew how important this is. The objective of... Um, that's a different slide, am I right? Should be prayer objectives. Do you have that? That's that's different, right? There. Okay, there. Prayer objectives. Prayer isn't preparation for battle. It is the battle. I have this philosophy in ministry that everything that we do in ministry is prayer. Okay. And the rest is just an outcome of that. We approach people and say, can you be part of our church plant? And they'll say, no, it's an answer to prayer. Am I right? Maybe those people will ruin your church plant. You just don't know, right? And then you walk down the road, you meet a person, and they'll say, can I join the, your uh, church plant? So prayer is not a preparation for battle, it is the battle. Okay? You need to have a personal prayer life that is considered to be healthy. Okay? And I don't know what kind of person you are in terms of uh, effectivity. I am a night person. Okay? My effectivity, I am very effective at 9 o'clock in the evening up to 1 or 2 in the morning. Okay? That, that is my... my do not talk to me between 8 in the morning to 12. All my members know that they only call me after lunch because they don't get anything from me in the morning because I'm not a morning person. I am, I am an evening person. Okay. So, and this is always our advice. Pray the, uh, your, study the word of God or, or pray or have your devotion at your best time. Okay, so I, that's the time when I study. That's the time when I prepare sermon. That's the time I, 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 I pray. Okay? And, and I have created like ways how to do this. Uh, so sometimes evening could not be good for me to pray in the park. Do you have parks here in, in Slovakia or in your places? So that's one of the best places to, to pray. You know? uh, and then recently, we, we acquired a dog, we bought a dog and a puppy, and, and one of the best time for me to pray is when I walk the dog. And of course, not closing my eyes, because that will be a problem, but uh, <laughs> while I walk the dog in the community, I'm praying. Okay? Uh, and later on, we're going to talk about that. But you should have a personal prayer life that is healthy. And our recommendation is that you recruit 50 prayer partners, not less than 50. Um, there's there's a new church plan that I know that's very success, successful, and and I know the guy I know the the one who planted the church and when he started the church plan he had more than one thousand prayer partners more than one thousand okay, and so the 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 bigger number that you have uh, it's better no, and so you can recruit prayer partner uh, prayer uh, partners from your old church from your old acquaintances uh, family friends. Uh, seminary, uh, even professors and seminary classmates, okay? And with the advent of the internet, uh, Facebook and everything, it's so easy now, right? To, to, to share your prayer requests and even your uh, praises uh, and to even to recruit. I have prayer partners, while I was doing this, I have prayer partners in Saudi Arabia at that time. I have prayer partners in Japan. I have prayer partners in the Philippines and definitely uh, in California. Okay, so uh, geographical limits uh, cannot be considered here because, of, again, as I've said, we are becoming a global community through the internet and, and uh, 
technological advances in, in the computer world. Prayer ministries that mobilize people to pray, and we're going to talk about this uh, later, okay? First, personal prayer life. Um, as you know, prayer life and righteous life or uh, becoming more intimate with God is almost side by side. In James chapter 5, 16, 17, the, right, the prayer of a righteous man avail that much. Uh, and the basis of that is Elijah. He was a human being just like us, and yet he prayed. Uh, and the Lord answered he, his prayer. Uh, and I have seen, I have seen how the Lord answered prayers uh, when we when we really take the time, you know, uh, struggle, and and be consistent with our prayer life. Um, so how do we do this? Uh, what are the areas that somehow you are seeing wherein you are resisting the Holy Spirit to work in your life? Usually. Uh, this is how the Holy Spirit works. And as you know it, uh, He brings you out of your comfort zone. Right? Uh, and basically that's where we grow. In our spiritual life, in our leadership. Uh, those are the places where you, if you want to grow in your leadership abilities, in your prayer life, do not stay in your comfort zone. No? Get out of it. No? Uh, and, and very important that uh, you you uh, realize that uh, you really need to depend upon God. Now, I, I told you that this church plant was my first church plant. Uh, every time, I mean, when I went to the Bible school, my major was pastoral ministry. Because for us, missions means to, you will plant church. Okay? In the Philippines, means when you go to missions, means you're going to plant a church. Okay? Not cross-cultural, because for the longest time, Philippines was the receiving missionary country. It was hard for us to turn it around to be a sending missionary uh, country, okay? because we always receive missionaries. And so it took a while for the Philippine church to say, maybe it's time for us to send out missionaries. <laughs> Not only receive them, but send out missionaries to other nations. You know? Uh, in the same way, for me, it was very hard to say I will stop becoming a pastor, but a church planter. No. And so that was one aspect that somehow I was resisting the Lord. And and, and the other thing is that uh, you, you're, I know my weaknesses at the time, and so I will pray to the Lord uh, how how He can help me overcome them. Uh, I am very passionate. Uh, in terms of evangelism, but that's not my giftedness. And my, my struggle is that from unbeliever or unchurched to where he can sit down and I can share the gospel. That, that, that aspect, how I can bring him to a table where I can share the gospel, that is my weakness. But when he's sitting on the table ready, I can share the gospel, I can close the deal, I can, I can lead him to Christ every day. But from from uh, 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 like you don't know the person, how you can establish relationship. So I have to, I have to rely on the Holy Spirit to do this, and 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 God answered the prayers because we started this church. You know, it's a very different way. We started this. Uh, somebody called us. Yeah, uh, Pastor June, you don't know me, but um, this is my name. And I heard that you're planting a church. Why don't you come to my house and start a Bible study? That's how we started the church, <laughs> really. Yeah, uh, and, and it was really an answer to prayer. You were raising your hand, Steve. Yeah, I, when you mentioned that, I think that that is an issue with a lot of people, maybe in this room, is that they don't have the Holy Spirit to Not want to hear the gospel at all. 
Ok. In our context, because we uh, most of our target people are predominantly Roman Catholic, and the Roman Catholic doesn't have a personal touch in their ministry, because they will have only like let's say five priests in one parish, and they have like twenty thousand, thirty thousand people. How can they personally do ministry? And so our secret is that when there's somebody sick, we visit them, uh, we we really pray with them, and be present with them. Uh, and so that that's one thing that is really really important. Uh, so. But it will take some time because grace is so much hard for a Roman Catholic to understand because they earn salvation, they don't receive it, um, they have to work for it, and then all of a sudden you say, no, you, you. Abraham believed and it was reckoned to him righteousness. <laughs> and so it's hard for them to understand that. And so Bible study is a, is a way to really for them to understand. And then it will take years for them to be baptized because being baptized means that they are changing religion. That was so hard for me to understand, especially in the beginning of my ministry, because they receive Christ already and then they don't like, they come, they come to worship service, they give their tithes, everything, everything. And then every time I, I bring out Baptism, they back out. No, and the reason is that uh, you're asking me to change my religion. I'm not ready yet. So, I'm not asking you, but this is part of following Jesus Christ. Uh, and then I, I came up with an understanding that it should come from them and rather than me. They are be, we, I will be teaching baptism, but not pressure them to be baptized. They'll be the one who should ask me and say, I'm ready to be baptized. So you raise your son, hand, Milan. Yes. Yeah. And in the same time, sometimes we have we have this uh, temptation kind of to to keep all these people inside of the church activities, like they should come to the Sunday service, yeah, yeah. to the youth meeting, etc. And I'm trying to, to, to learn like okay, I have this not many individuals who are really good in making new co contacts with new people. Yeah. So rather be there yeah. different church meetings yeah, yeah. instead of making good new contacts because those people will bring these new people to us that's there. true, that's uh, true. we are asking these people like to be in in, in the church, church instead yeah. of being yeah, there yeah. and I, I live for 13 years sports ministry so I know there are many people who are you know sports ministry minded yeah. but they don't like to see it in the, in the church. church they like yeah. We we have a, a basketball tournament, and so we'll rent a gym, and then uh, sometimes in the church, and then we'll have a, 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 a league, you know? and we'll have maybe six teams, seven teams, and 90% of them are not Christian. Before we start every game, there will be a Bible study of five minutes. 
Five minutes only, okay? Five minutes only. That's that's the most that we can. And there we'll, we'll pray and present the gospel little by little. And then uh, that's how we we invite people. So yeah, this is really hard. Uh, it's not easy, especially again in our cult- in your culture, which is highly individualistic, uh, very busy. Uh, there are a lot of alternatives out there rather than attend a spiritual gathering, uh, and so you need to come up with with these uh, with, with things how you can uh, reach these people. Uh, I don't know if you know Tim Keller, the Redeemer Church in Manhattan. Uh, he 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 has he, his culture is that they were so uh, exposed to advertisement the the people because they live in Manhattan in New York, and so his church did not advertise. Yeah, I, I was he was a resource speaker one time and he shared that I was like really because he said yeah our people were so exposed to advertisement they're so suspicious, and so what we have done is that we involve through relationship we don't we don't have a billboard we don't have a, a, a flyer that says we this is where our church come no no we don't have anything of those he said because the culture is that it is against that they're very suspicious about that uh, i don't know with your culture in america uh, knocking at the door presenting the gospel that doesn't work anymore uh, yeah don't tell that to the Mormons or Jehovah's Witnesses because that's what still they're doing. Uh, and uh, it's it's true relationship. Like what we call sometimes the pre, uh, pre-worship pre service or, or the pre-Bible study uh, activities. We'll have barbecue in the park, all these activities, uh, but it's not any anything that religious but you they meet people who are members of the church okay and so when they come to some of the invitations that we have for religious activities they know already because they may they they met john in the party no? uh, they met susan in the party so when they come they're not they're not visitor anymore no? People are scared to attend our Bible study, our worship service. I'll be teaching the worship later on. We had horror stories of that. Like <laughs> they, they didn't want to step into the church because uh, they had bad experiences. So, yeah. So pray how the Lord will open doors, and and this this is very important. Uh, you need to look for uh, one very effective way. Uh, I have very little rejection. I had rejection, but very little in terms of very few. When I ask people if they have prayer requests, uh, or sometimes when I visit, uh, for example, members who are in the hospital, and I will go from room to room and ask, for, and I'll ask them. Uh, by the way, my name is Pastor June, and and I can pray for you for for the sick person, and 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 I will ask permission. By the way, that is in our culture. You need to ask permission. No? You just cannot barge in and say, oh, "I'm Pastor June. Let's pray." To you. No, you cannot do that. <laughs> so uh, when I visit members of the church, I see to it that I will visit also those who are maybe in the left or right of the rooms and, and somehow I will leave my calling card with them and uh, that way they, they know that the church is existing two blocks away, three blocks away. By the way, the church that we have is like in front of a hospital and so hospital visitation is like a common ministry for, for us. No? We have a church planter and they love to cook. And behind behind their calling card says there every Friday morning free breakfast in our house. So yeah, that's okay. yeah. And 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 their church really this is so amazing. Their church grow uh, depending on how big their house is. When they were renting a small house, their church is going down. Yeah, they rented the big house, their church was going down. And the reason is that they're inviting people for parties. No, no, no agenda, no agenda, okay? They'll just, they'll find out that it's, it's your birthday next month, and they, they'll say, you know what? I can prepare a party for you. Yeah, yeah. Do you have friends that have the same birthday, same month? Yes, I have two. Why don't you, why don't we have a, like a, a, a joint celebration? And so they're going to have it, I'm talking about Nathan and, and uh, Belly and Marao. And so, both husband and wife, they are very hospitable, uh, and, and they love to cook, and they take advantage of that. Uh, 
And so think about, I know that sometimes evangelism is almost like doing the things that we don't like. And that is not, that's a bad definition of evangelism. I'd rather do it this way. What are the nice things or fun things that you do? Incorporate evangelism there. Yeah. For me, uh, for example, discipleship, uh, Monday is our, like, my, my day off. So this was during summer. And almost always Monday night, us pastors play basketball with our kids. And so we have done that. And sometimes the elders and the young people will go. After basketball, this is about 8 o'clock in the evening, 9 o'clock. About seven young people in our church decided to come to our house. Like, hey, Pastor June, um, we'll go to your house tonight. <laughs> And so, oh yes, yeah, so no problem, okay? And my wife was there, he knew, she knew only about it when we were about to enter the house, and so <laughs> we, uh, we watch movies up to four o'clock in the morning. Uh, we have, and you know I'm a night person, we have a swimming pool at the back of the house. We woke up at 11 or 10, went to the swimming pool, barbecue, and then had a Bible study. <laughs> I brought them to their houses. One sensible young person, he was the last person that, that I brought to his house and said, hey, Pastor June, this is discipleship, right? And I said, yeah. And this is what he said. I think I like discipleship. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, think about evangelism. And that is actually um, the definition in Matthew 29, go and make disciples. As you go and conduct your lives, make disciples. So... You love hockey here? Incorporate this evangelism and discipleship in that aspect. Do not just sit down here, let's have discipleship. And my notes to your notes. That is not discipleship, my friends. It's my life to your life. Uh, I was talking to Dan that in our house, uh, <laughs> they're talking about limits, boundaries. And so my wife, I'm very extrovert. My wife said to me, um, you know, I don't have a problem you bringing people to the house. Even You don't even tell me it's not a problem. Can you just tell them not to lie down on our bed? <laughs> <laughs> okay, honey, I'll do that. I, I mean, I will, I will open the door. They can look into our bedroom. They can pass through our bedroom. But can you just ask them not to lie down on our bed? <laughs> okay, honey. <laughs> I'll do that. <laughs> this is just my philosophy that in order for me to touch you, you I have to open my life to you. you. You will know my secret. You will know my struggles. Uh, my, as they say in Spanish, mi casa, you, uh, su casa. My house is your house, your house is my house. And so you, you're welcome, you're welcome to our house. Okay, so yeah, if you can change that perspective here in, in your country, in your churches, that evangelism is not moving into something that is so unnatural and so uh, scary, but rather, what are the... Fun things, good things that you're doing, and then incorporate discipleship and evangelism. Okay, prayer walking. Uh, much of the battle that is waged in the church, uh, planting is spiritual, so take the battle to the, to the streets. No? Um, every year for the last, I think there were two years that we missed this, but every year we have a prayer walking in our church. Uh, we get the map. Uh, Sometimes we literally walk, but sometimes we ride in the car by twos or threes, and we go to the specific areas of the community. Like there is an abortion clinic in our community, so some people will go there in front of the abortion clinic and pray that the Lord will save the lives of this baby. Uh, we go to sometimes, uh, recently there was this an eye, eye opener, the young people went to the mall. <laughs> <laughs> and, and like pray there in, inside the mall. And they were standing in the mall, inside the mall, and they were praying uh, for the young people of our community. 
Uh, sometimes the community, you have a hill uh, or, or overlooking in your community, target community, you go up to that hill and just pray over the community and ask the Lord that he will do great things uh, in your church and for the whole church, okay? When I say whole church, all the evangelical churches or Christian churches that are there in the community will reap the harvest, okay? Um, We, do, we Sometimes we do this individually and sometimes we do this uh, corporately. Again, as I've said, one of the... I like walking the dog because it's an exercise for me. It's time for me to get fresh air. It's time for me to meet people. And then also I can pray. So it's like, it's a win-win-win situation for me. Okay, and, and it's, so, it's so easy to communicate with people, to meet people, because they're dog lovers, right? And then you have a dog and like... Yeah. You need prayer, just call me. No? Uh, the Roman Catholic, they dedicate everything, right? As we say in our context, anything that moves, we dedicate. And so in our card, we dedicate children, houses, cars, whatever. <laughs> we will dedicate. And, and, and priests will not come because they're very busy, right? And so we come as pastors and we dedicate their, their cars, their, their houses, even though they're not Christian. Yeah. And they will ask me. I have a lot of weddings that are not believers or not members of our church. And they will ask me to do the wedding uh, because I'm available and their priest is not available. And so that's one way to, to share the gospel with them as well. Benefits of prayer walking, awareness of the neighborhood, the submission. Uh, you know, sometimes you really need to go out, open your eyes. Uh, that this, this, this is a field that is ready. Okay, and in the prayer of Jesus Christ, remember He said, "The harvest is plentiful." There is no problem with the harvest; they're always ready. It's us, the workers, that don't go out. You know, in that prayer in John, in Luke chapter ten, Christ was not asking for more workers. No, He was. He was not. He was asking that the workers will be deputized. Yeah. The prayer was that for Christian to go out. He was not asking for more workers. He was asking that the workers will go out because even few workers can make a difference. No? There's a big difference between a Christian and a worker. And, and I hope that all our Christians will become workers. So be aware that the neighborhood has a mission. Better understanding of the community. No? Uh, I was amazed one time we went through a community in our, in, in our place. That there were those, like, I didn't know that this kind of poverty exists in our community. As, as Steve was sharing about people, sometimes homeless people, right? And you, you close your eyes to them, but all of a sudden you're, the black Blinders in your eyes they remove, and you see them. They're there, and it, there's an opportunity for you to share the gospel with them. Meet some people you normally never met. Ask them if you can pray for them. Um, in your context, this okay. You can you can knock at the door, or maybe yeah, in the hospital, and ask ask them that you can pray for them. Is that okay here? You are a pastor. You can do that. But local members cannot do that. I mean, members of the church cannot do that. It's strange. It's strange. Elders cannot do that? No. Really? It's, it's just elders are normal. Yeah. <laughs> and pastors are normal. Considered. 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 Pastors are normal. And also, it's a training, too, uh, if you can prepare your. One of the good things was that I was visiting this member of my, again, I told you, in our church, elders and pastor are the same. Okay, when you are an elder, you're a pastor. When you're a pastor, you're an elder. So I visited the member who was sick, and he said, oh, by the way, elder was here uh, yesterday. And, and he said he brought the communion to me. Because on Sunday, if you cannot come to our communion, you're sick, we will bring the communion to you. And, and so we, he brought the communion to him without even asking or telling me, <laughs> which is nice, right? Uh, but I have my own communion, and, and it's like, no, no I, Pastor, I, I, I had it yesterday. <laughs> so no double communion today. But my elder <laughs> gave the communion, and he asked others as well on the other end of the room if they would like to take the communion and say, uh, this is Christ, and explain to them how... how he died for us. So, uh, again, uh, empower your people to do the ministry rather than you doing it. Uh, 
praying on location. Again, as I've said, you can go to places that are maybe a bastion or a stronghold of the enemy, and you ask that the Lord will unshackle the, the, the slavery, spiritual slavery. Uh, is, is, is spiritual battle here, uh, Tamas, is spiritual battle here a, 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 a reality in this place? Yes or no? <laughs> I mean, if, like, in Asia, like in, in the Philippines, India, China, the work of the enemy is so, let's say, obvious that you need the spiritual battle. People are being possessed by the demon and all those things. In America, not so much. Uh, they don't need to be possessed by demons yeah. because they have, they've been possessed by they, money and... Uh, Okay. Okay. So, um, what I'm trying to say is that I, I hope you got the idea is that bring the battle in, into the street. Don't don't just you know the church was not born in the four corners of the room. Some people misunderstood the book of Acts that they thought it the church was born in the upper room. No, no, it wasn't. It was incubated in the upper room. But the church was born when Peter stood in the middle of the street in Jerusalem and preached the gospel. So we have an idea that the church belongs in the street. Every time the church retreat from the street, we, we become dead, actually. But every time we engage the culture, no matter how hard it is, actually we become more uh, healthy. Yeah. So do that. Do that in your think of, I'm not telling you what to do because again I don't know your culture. But how can you engage your culture as a church? And then of course prayer is very important there. Why uh, church wide fast? Again, out of the 17 years, maybe 16, we have done this. We have a 40-day fasting in the church, and almost always it's the beginning of the ministry. Summertime is it's a lot of time for us, and so we almost kill every ministry except the, those very important. And then by the beginning in the fall, we have a 40-day fasting, and we ask members to fast one day. For example, uh, I'll ask Brother Peter and say, this is your day. And we, it's a schedule. I, I give out the schedule. So every day there is a person who is praying from the church or in the church, uh, a church member uh, fasting. They have to meet, they have to skip lunch. Rather than eat lunch, they will go out. If they're working, they will not go to the. Con they're, they're, they're not going to bring their food. They're not going to eat, but rather spend that time in prayer. So uh, prayer fasting is very important. Uh, you have to teach them. Uh, if you if not. If this is not a culture in your church, uh, try to somehow teach them, prepare them. It, it did not happen automatically in the church, but we, we have done this every year, almost every year in, in our church. Uh, that uh, We have what we call the, the wide church-wide fast. Okay? Um, and then I found out that sometimes they forgot, and so I have to remind them. I have, that week, I will send out an email and say, okay, these are the seven people who will be fasting this week. Uh, and so just a reminder to them that, uh, and then I give them what are the things that they, they will pray. Again, do not assume. Do not assume that they know it, okay? And so you tell them what to do, the expectation, what are the things that we, they need to pray. And then also, uh, somehow, and this is all by faith, and say to them that you prepare them for how God will answer the, the prayers, Okay? Yeah, that tell them that as you pray for the lost soul, maybe this week, there will be an opportunity for you to share the gospel. There will be a need that will open and be sensitive, be discerning. And so that those are the things that you need to tell them. Okay? Uh, you expect that God will, will, will work, right? Am I right? No? <laughs> that when you pray, you expect God to work. Okay? So, so uh, expect that God will work. Okay? Um, number four, mobilizing intercessors. Uh, definition of intercessor, people who are gifted and for sustained and focused prayer. Not all your prayer partners will become intercessors. No? Uh, and at least 
ask the Lord who will become intercessors, who, who have the gift, who have the commitment to pray for you. As Steve said, as we begin this seminar, there are a lot of people praying for you today. Believe me, there are a lot of people praying for us today. That the Lord will work in a very special way, that you will catch the vision, that you will go out here with a new vision, with a new desire, with a determination to preach the gospel and love the people around you. Those are answer to our our prayers because we've been and and we're not praying only because we're starting no no we've been praying for this for a long time because we know that we're coming here at uh, this time and a lot of people are praying for your for you even uh, before we started this okay we knew the biblical example uh, exodus uh, chapter 17 when moses asked uh, joshua to pray uh, I mean, Joshua leading the army and, and Moses praying. Uh, you need those people to sustain you in prayer. Even the Apostle Paul asked for prayer that he will be bold in the preaching of the gospel. Okay. Um, have clear expectations. What are the things that they will be praying for? Uh, contact them, maintain a good relationship with them, and always tell them that there is confidentiality. And by the way, when you ask people to become your prayer partners, this is not a one way, this is two way, okay? You will tell them, send me your prayer request too. That's bad when you're the only one sending prayer requests, right? Right? Maybe they will feel they'll be used, right? So ask them to, what, what are your prayer requests as well? So you can pray for them. Yeah? You can pray for them. Uh, okay. Any question about this? About and you need to recruit at least fifty intercessors. Any question? We have at least ten minutes. Uh, question, and, uh, and then we will have the MAP the map. Page five. Page five. Yeah. Page five in the back. But before we go into that. Uh, any any question regarding this? Is prayer and fasting a culture in your church? Prayer and fasting? Not really. Not really? We're only suggesting you start the list, uh, but many of you can fill out up to 20 people, yeah. and then you, you can go home and finish the list or share it if you're in a group share your list and make sure that there's a plan to get information to people in whatever media that is possible and uh, that you keep confidential things confidential you're not praying for personal and sensitive things uh, you know you've got to be a little careful but uh, you can Pray for sensitive things, but maybe not with names. Uh, just, just be careful. But you can have a broad uh, group of people. Uh, Pastor June uh, did something that was pretty interesting when they started their first church plan. I was about to share that, but you are. Go ahead. No, 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 no. Go ahead, go ahead, go ahead, go ahead, go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. I don't want to steal you. No, no. My my stories are your stories. So go ahead. <laughs> Me stories, you stories. <laughs> he recruited prayer partners from all around the region, in the uh, general region of the church, and in other churches. And we were part of that uh, intercession team for that uh, uh, church plan. And uh, my mother-in-law was part of that team. And every once in a while, I don't know how often you did this, but several times. Like tw twice a year in the yeah. very beginning. He would go out to each group and meet with them, and they would have a prayer meeting together. And then he would be able to personally share the answers, which is a, a step better than just always just writing answers so that they can interact over the requests and the answers to prayer. So he took it another level of uh, really developing the relationships of the prayer team as well as having yeah, I, ha I had three like three places where I go and I gather my prayer partners. I I mean the the cell phone or the 
it came late in my life so I'm highly personal and so that's how I, I was doing the ministry so I meet with people face to face and say okay let's pray together so that, that was one thing that but it helped I didn't I didn't realize that and so we also pray for those people so I, I I'll, I'll ask them that maybe three months from now four months from now we'll be gathering in this room at this time we'll be we'll start at eight o'clock in the morning and at nine uh, so that people will somehow schedule it. And so I, I'll share with them the, the advances of the ministry, and then I'll share them the needs and the problems and the prayer requests. Yeah. So you can do that. Again, we're not telling you what to do, but we're asking that you get the principle. Okay. What is important is that you pray. Again, you, 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 re, you really need to pray. You really need to pray. Uh, one of my weaknesses is that I'm very limited as far as music is concerned. I'm not gifted in music, but I know I need to have a good praise and worship band before we start. So that prayer request, I mean, I, I prayed like, like crazy <laughs> when I asked the Lord for that, because that, I knew that we really need that. When we open the, pray, the public worship, I need a good band to, to, to bring people in and to be attracted. Because also the band, actually, that was our first recruit. Uh, how we recruit because artists attract artists and so we allow even non-Christian to play in our Christian they don't lead they don't lead okay we have a saying that pagans can play we have we, we have an understanding that it is an evangelistic way to reach people and so they they will they will become part of our band even though they're not Christian but with the knowledge that we're going to share the gospel. They don't lead the worship. They don't. They're, they're part of the band. So, yeah, few became believers and become church members because of that. We need to have time to do that. Yeah. So, we're going to be finishing at 1220. Yeah, that's the. We're the up for sure. And maybe the next slide as well. That is the last slide, I think. No. Oh, no. Uh, Oh, sorry. What prayer ministries will you think about starting? Yeah, your yeah. Church plan or your imagined church plan that you're thinking about? What kind of things would you do to enhance and mobilize prayer in your church? So write down the 50 people or 20 people. Again, it doesn't need to be complete right now, but later on. And then we'll talk about how we can mobilize prayer for Okay, uh, we'll have a few minutes for the next question, which is the, what prayer ministries will you establish in your new church plan? We're just bouncing off ideas here. What, what, can you share something, what will be the ministries, prayer ministries, that you can think of, uh, you need to establish in your uh, new church plan? How can you make your uh, core group pray for the ministry, for the church plan? Any suggestion? Is music a big part of your culture here? Music? Festival? They have music concert, they have Christian music concert. Yeah. And, and it's uh, well attended. Yeah, we have several, but the biggest one is during the summer for like four days, and it's, they have like 4,000 people. Or the more, more adults. So you can incorporate music and prayer together. Just thinking of that would be a new thing. What's experience uh, prayer, pass, prayer and fasting in your ministry? Okay, can you share a little bit of that, how you incorporate it? Is it something individually or is it something that is church-wide? Or even maybe a group of people? Can, can you share how, what, how? Well, we do it also at church. Okay. Similarly, as you share. Ah, okay. 
you done both prayer and fast the chains. How many how long are you happy? Well sometimes we do it you know, like during the church year, you know, fast time okay. forty days. Forty days as well? Yeah. Or this year uh, one one of the well not an elder met in the church he preached mm -hmm. about fasting and he encouraged people mm -hmm. to join him or it's not easy, but you need to be focused. We have got a number of people who participate. participate. There was a Korean church where we were having, there's a, we were renting a church, it's an American white church, and there was a Korean church and a Filipino church. We learn from the Korean church because every 5 o'clock in the morning, every day, including Sunday, they meet to pray. And the first thing, the first thing that they do, they enter the sanctuary, the worship service is at 1 o'clock, ours was 3 o'clock. Sometimes we'll be there, I will preach in the morning in the Caucasian church, so I'll be there when the Korean church will come in. You know the first thing that they do when they enter the church, they pray. Yeah, they'll just sit down and individually they will pray. Because prayer is part of their culture. Yeah. Uh, we have found out that if the, the, the strength of the Filipino church is music. But the strength of the Korean church is prayer. Yeah. And of course, they're going to be the Americans maybe next decade to be the most missionaries, I'd say. Yeah. Uh, they're sending out missionaries like the so, so we're finding that that is their strength, prayer. And as well as uh, Sunday. But you, we can learn from that, as you have said. Uh, we, can, we can do that. What else? What, what, what prayer that you can incorporate in the church? Maybe just small steps, if that's not the culture of your plan, uh, church. That, not go right away for prayer and fasting. I was able to do that because uh, it was a new church plan that we had. So people didn't know what to expect. So I was able to somehow able to maneuver and say, okay, these are the things. And, like, and they found out that that's not the normal thing in the church. But in our church, that's a normal thing. Every year we have prayer and fasting. When it's September or October, that's the start of, of the prayer uh, prayer ministry of the church before we even start the ministry. So you can, again, you are defining the culture of the, your, 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 your church. And, and that's one of the best things that we can, that we have an advantage when we are doing uh, church planting. Yeah. Okay, what, what else? A uh, few seconds. What else we can share uh, that could be effective in your church? I, I see before people who raise their hands. Tomas, did you, did you raise your hands about prayer fasting? Can you share? Yeah. Uh, Typical for uh, for Czech church uh, mm -hmm. to fast when there is a crisis, okay. uh, like <laughs> fasting for someone who who, uh, who is in, in, uh, in the age of, of death, uh, which was the recent recent experience for for praying uh, for one pastor in Czech, Czech Republic. Uh, we are so happy that he he is alive and, yeah. and, and he is doing uh, much better. Uh, but usually we we use the fasting the chain at, 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 in, in the time of crisis. Okay. Uh, me personally, I had uh, some experiences with uh, long-term fasting mm -hmm. myself, uh, and uh, for me it was really important time of preparation or, or uh, yeah. So so it, it was more like. How about uh, prayer walking? Have you experienced that? Have you experienced that in the church? Okay, go ahead. And, okay. For me, it is very natural to walk and pray always. Okay. I cannot see or something. Okay. About the class of ADD. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I think this was <laughs> Spirit cannot work when we're sitting. <laughs> That's our view. <laughs> Do you bring your people with you to do that? Sometimes. 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 Okay. Yes. And that would be more fun, right? If you bring and say, you know what, I'm walking today and pray. Well, just 
Yeah, and let's have coffee afterwards. Yeah. Who else who have experience here that could, maybe we could share uh, in terms of prayer? Yes. Um, we call them snap prayers. N A P, which is stop now and pray. Mm -hmm. And it's just messages, text messaging when you're entering a situation that you would like prayer support for. Yeah. Send send a snap prayer yeah. request to friends, and that's when you pray in that situation. And then if you were able to cultivate that culture in the church where you exchange prayer uh, requests and even praises. And, and again, please, not only focus on the crisis and those things. It's very clear in the Bible that we should pray with thanksgiving in our hearts. Okay? So remind them also to rejoice. And sometimes we're overwhelmed with the, with the problems that we don't see also the good things that God is doing in our lives, right? So very important for us to emphasize as well that this is a time to rejoice. No? Uh, a new person came to know Jesus Christ, a new person who uh, recommitted his life. I think those are the things that we need to share with other people. That indeed, you know, that indeed that prayer is really effective because some, a lot of people are skeptic about it, right? And so we have to convince them that prayer really works you know, in our lives, in our, in our ministries. So we need to communicate. Okay, we're done. I think uh, 12.20 is our time for break.